I recently received two so-called power server devices, which I ordered a couple of weeks ago from AliExpress. According to the manual, the product promises to actively monitor and improve the power factor, optimizes the wattage and current demands, and thus reduce my electricity bill up to 35%. All of that is possible by simply plugging the gadget into the wall sockets. And since pretty much every feedback on their site is positive, it has to be true. Right? Well, in this video, let's open up those devices, learn a bit about reactive power and finally discover the truth of this high efficient technique of Germany. Let's get started. First off, I cracked open the plastic power saver by unscrewing one hidden screw and applying a bit of force. Inside I found a PCB with a fuse, four badly soldered in resistors, two green LEDs and literally a black box which is connected in parallel to the mains inputs. After removing the box from the main PCB, I used the transistor tester to find out that the box is actually a high voltage capacitor, with a capacity of roughly 2 microfarads. And the LEDs are only used to discharge the capacitor once the connection to mains voltage is interrupted. So there is definitely no active monitoring happening here. Maybe the second metal power saver, which is certainly missing a protective conductor, since its casing is metal and thus conductive, is the real deal. Inside we can once again find a fuse, a LED, a mostly empty PCB and believe it or not, two black boxes, which are labeled this time as 5 microfarad capacitor. So in a nutshell, the so-called power savers basically connect a capacitor in parallel to your other appliances. But why? Well, in order to present a more practical explanation, let me first dewire up my auto transformer in order to create a small AC voltage which is safe to work with. For the first test circuit, I simply connected a 6 volt light bulb to the output of my transformer, increased the voltage to, obviously, 6 volts RMS and observed that the current which flows through the bulb follows the same path as the sinusoidal voltage. This behavior is known as a resistive load. The next type of load is inductive, which can be a coil or more popular motors, which basically consist of coils. This time the current is lagging and follows the voltage with a phase shift of 90 degrees. And last but not least we have the capacitive load, which is the opposite of the inductive load, because this time the current is leading, with a phase shift of 90 degrees as well, but in the other direction. So what does that mean for our power consumption? If I connect a common energy meter from Germany in series to the resistive load, which consumes around 21.6 watts at 6 volts and 3.6 amps, we can see that the counting wheel does spin, because we are drawing real power which for example creates light and heat. But if I power my inductive load with 24 volts, which draws 0.91 amps, it should consume around 21.8 watts as well. But the counting wheel spins way slower. The reason is that the inductor creates reactive power by building up and then reducing its magnetic field, which lets energy oscillate between the energy producer and load, which strains the power grid. This is measured in volt ampere reactive, not watts and is, as we already observed, not measurable with the common energy meter. And since the capacitor builds up and releases its electrostatic field with AC voltage, it also creates reactive power, but opposing to the inductive reactive power, which means that a capacitor in parallel to an inductive system can reduce the phase shifts and thus decrease the overall reactive power. But because the common household energy meter cannot record reactive power, there is no need to decrease it to save money, especially not with an uncontrolled, not monitoring system like those power savers. And to give you a more practical example, let's have a look at what the current consumption of my living room looks like. As you can see, it looks nothing like what I just clarified. The reason are the nowadays widely used switch mode power supplies, which do not draw sinusoidal current. 
This creates current harmonics, which thus deform the sinusoidal mains voltage and create another kind of reactive power, so called distortion reactive power. And the power saver, aka capacitor, can actually decrease those current harmonics, but on the other hand simultaneously increase the overall reactive power by 130 volts ampere reactive. All in all, saving money with the power saver is most likely not possible. So let's change Germany to China and forget about this nonsense. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, that would be awesome. Stay creative and I will see you next time.